Now, a look at a novel that has received much attention in recent months. Written by Native American author Tommy Orange, it sheds light on a group of people long stereotyped and often ignored. And again to Jeffrey Brown, who traveled to Oakland, California, for the latest from our NewsHour bookshelf. Diamond Park in Oakland, California. Tommy Orange spent hours here as a kid and now visits with his wife and son. He grew up down the street, the child of a white mother and Native American father. Sometimes you feel like you belong right in the skin that you have, and sometimes you feel like an alien, and um, all the different spaces between. Orange's acclaimed debut, There There, is a novel of voices. A dozen characters exploring what it means to be Native American in an urban setting, not on a reservation. I wanted to, to have the range of, of experiences for these Native characters, so different ages and different contexts and um, different struggles and backgrounds, various different proximities to their Native identity. Some, some struggle with it and some don't. So I wanted to, I wanted to have a range of, of what it means to be Native right now. For 36-year-old Orange, an enrolled member of the Cheyenne and Arapaho tribes, his native identity came mostly through visits to his father's childhood home in Oklahoma. Back in Oakland, identity was more fluid, even concerning what an Indian is supposed to look like. If I'm in the fruit vale, um, like we are now, people will speak Spanish to me first. Yeah, um, in this part of town. Yeah, yeah. In, in high school, I was called racial slurs. Uh, racial slurs uh, it was, for Indian? It was actually uh, Chinese racial slurs in, oh, really? in high school. Yeah. And we were taking, you were taken as Asian? Yeah. Wow. So it's, you know, I've been thought to be a lot of different things because I have, you know, an ambig ambiguity. If slurs are thrown at you about being Chinese, what's your reaction to that? Well, I, I got pretty angry, um, but it was also confusing. Um, it's like... You can't even be made fun of, right? <laughs> After graduating from college, Orange worked in a variety of jobs, including here at Oakland's Native American Health Center. Okay. Returning with us recently, he was now a local celebrity. He became a reader late, he told me, and wasn't satisfied with the monolithic image of natives he found. When people think the only way to be native or the only way to look native is based on a historical um, headdressed, feathered image, right. you're already disappeared. You're already gone before you can even start. There's something powerful about seeing yourself on the page or, or on the screen, and we don't have very much a good positive uh, version of that. Um, Native people, have, we have a lot of stereotypes that we battle against, or negative ideas that we're dumb or we're drunk or, you know. Um, so I was sort of writing out of a loneliness, what came out is being widely praised as an important new voice in American literature. We know the sound of the freeway better than we do rivers, the howl of distant trains better than wolf howls. We know the smell of gas and freshly wet concrete and burned rubber better than we do the smell of cedar or sage or even fry bread. We ride buses, trains, and cars across over and under concrete plains. Being Indian, has never been about returning to the land. The land is everywhere or nowhere. One of the characters in There There, 14-year-old Orville Redfeather, explores his Indian heritage by looking online and watching videos on YouTube. One, two. A contemporary way to learn what it means to be native and something Orange himself turned to for research. In an urban setting, if you're not tapped into the, to the community and you're not going to powwows, um, and, you know, for some of us, our parents weren't forthright about the history or, the, or our culture or our tribe, um, sometimes because of pain. Um, so there, there's still that curiosity and, and what better place that for there is there than the internet if you're curious. A powwow, in fact, becomes the destination that finally connects Orange's characters. He patterned it on real ones, large intertribal gatherings like this in Albuquerque, New Mexico. It's intertribal, it's contemporary and traditional. But he set his fictional powwow at the Oakland Coliseum, where he'd attended ball games in his youth. You have a bunch of people coming together to dance and to sing and a drum, and 
there's an aliveness to being native that you can feel there. I have my characters reflecting on like how to be Indian, how, how do you do it now, what does that mean, what does that mean if you live in the city. Two part thing. Orange studied part, and now uh, teaches at the I'm Influential Institute of American Indian Arts in Santa Fe. And he's just one among a new generation of writers and poets telling a new native story. The goal now, he says, for himself and other writers to sustain the momentum they're building and to keep telling stories. Well, one of the functions of literature that I um, admire is when you can read like an intimate detail that a writer writes about and you have this feeling like, oh my God, I didn't know anybody else thought like that or did that. I want to be able to keep doing it and, and support my family and um, help other native writers in the program that I teach in to get their work out in the world. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown in Oakland, California.